Okay, the next important tool and the interesting tool that we are going to talk about is the force.com CLI. So what is force.com CLI? Force.com CLI allows you to work with the force.com data directly from the command line. You can browse and create force.com objects, view, edit, create, delete records, execute Apex code, SOQL queries and lot more in this. So definitely it's a great news for Unix guys. If you are familiar with Unix commands, if you have worked with Unix before, then it's just a cakewalk for you. And in fact, I think uh, this feature of command line interface was introduced uh, um, way back in 2013 if I remember right. Alright, so let's get started now. So how do we start it? First like you got to install force.com interface and that like you can do it through the link forceclihiroku.com you can very much get the link from Google, just Google force.com CLI and this, this link should right pop up. So once go to this link and depending on your machine, if it's a Windows machine or Mac, download the force.exe file and place it in a location in your computer. And, and be very sure that the location that you are placing your force.exe file should be identified by your path or the other way, you know, include that location in your path so that it can read and execute that. So once done, once done with the download, open command shell and start working. As simple as that. Now that I've downloaded the interface already in my machine, let me open the command line. The command line. First we got to log into Salesforce. So how do we log in? Force login. Once you execute this command, automatically it will redirect to login.salesforce.com. So given your username password, Login, allow access, okay authorization complete. You may now close this window. So close the window, go back to your command line. So what does it say? Logged in as online at training.com. That's my user. So now we have successfully logged in. What next? We got to understand the various commands that we can use in this, right? Alright, so these are the various commands that you can use. So what are all those? Login, logout, logins, active, who am I, describe, s object, big object, field, record. So these are the various commands that you can use in the force.com CLI interface. We just used login, that's force login. So what's the syntax for force login? We just gave force login and it navigated to login.salesforce.com, right? Instead, we can also give force login the instance like if it's the production instance or if it's a test instance for production instance you needn't specifically say it's a production instance by default it takes you to the production instance but if it's a test instance then you got to say test so i equals test and u equals username and p equals password so this is the syntax that you got to follow if you do not want to get navigated to login.salesforce.com and give the details instead you can just give force login username password it will automatically read the username and password and help you log in so how do we understand each of the commands and each of the syntax so you you got a command force help say for example you got to understand about login so just do force help login and it will give you the syntax of that particular command so what does it say it says force login and this is the syntax and these are all some examples like you know how you can basically use that command so i equals test means sandbox environment and username and password so you got to give in the username and password but when you do not specifically say as a test it will automatically take you to the production instance in a similar fashion you can use force help to understand about any command and its syntax and some examples about that let's do a few of them force who am i means basic it will list down all the details of the currently logged in user Next, force query. Force query is a command that is used for executing a SOQL query. Say for example, select ID, comma name from account. So that is my query. You can just execute the query and you can view the output like this. So force query and given your query within quotes. That will execute the query and give you the output. And you can very much export the output to a file. So how do you do that? Just after the command, given the location where you wanna export the details say extract.xls so automatically the query output will be exported to the particular location 
This is the file that just got exported from the interface. So it has extracted all the ID and name details of the account, basically the output of the query. So similarly, like any command output, you can very much extract it to a file for any usage. Okay, getting back to the comments. Force S object. Force S object. It says force S object is not the correct syntax and it gives me suggestions. It says like force S object list or create or delete or import. So list will basically list down all the S objects in your org and create will, you know, it is basically for creating a new object. Delete is for deleting an object and import is for importing the data. So, you know, in this, like, you know, you got to choose how you want to handle your S object. Say, for example, force S object list. So, this will basically list down all the S objects in the org. Just not the S object. Even you can list down all the fields that are associated to a particular S object. Force field list and which particular s object you want to extract the details say account so it will list down all the fields and the data type of that particular object say now accounts it has got all these fields and the related data type say for example this name it's a string number of employees it's an integer number of location double owner id reference etc but just not that in case of pick list it just not says it's a pick list, but also lists down all the pick list values. So definitely this command force field list s object is a very useful command because many times you want details of the object and the related fields. Basically that is called as a describing object, right? There are a couple of other tools using which you can basically describe the object, but then in some cases you cannot export the data. In some cases it gives you details only of standard objects. So this interface force.com CLI interface very much you can get these details and you can also export the details into a file. Another important command for admins is the force limits. Uh, this basically talks about the standard limits set by Salesforce and where your org stands with respect to those limits like uh, the data storage, the um, uh, file storage and all these. So you can basically know like what are all the limits and where your org is basically with all those limits. And definitely, you know, handling password is one important task for uh, admins. So force password that would basically you know give you the status of the password but just not that if you want to reset the password you can very much do this and force log yeah force log is something that is uh, very important is basically you know give you the details from the debug logs there are assets like nothing in the debug logs right now so it is giving me zero records but you know it, it pulls you values from the debug logs and force import and export force import and export are something important what is this force import and export force export basically exports the metadata of your arc and import like you know it imports the metadata of your arc so this operation of export and import is very essential because uh, in every arc in any any company or any project that you work in we regularly take metadata exports you know metadata backups we regularly take from the production instance and uh, you know we basically uh, have a shared drive or server wherein you can have all those metadata configuration in place so this is a very very regular activity that is done by admins and that activity you can very much do using the force.com cli so force export so force export just giving this command force export will automatically export the full metadata of your org to the location basically where you copied your force.exe file right so in the same location you will have a folder now created with all the exported metadata but in case like you know if you give a specific location definitely you can point that location so that all the exported met metadata will be stored in that particular location okay so now it says like it is exported to this particular location because i did not give any so it took the default path but otherwise definitely i can say force export and whichever location you can give that location C and whichever folder that you want to point to and that metadata will get exported to that particular location. Similarly there are different other commands that you can use so try out all the commands definitely it's an interesting exercise to work with. Now comes the most interesting and the most useful part of uh, force.com CLI. So what is that? You can automate process you can automate jobs using force CLI. 
So definitely this is a very big advantage of using the command line interface. So how you can automate the command line? Basically how you can automate a process or how you can automate a job? CLI makes it very easy. When you want to basically automate a particular process or a particular job, it depends on like, you know, if it's Windows or Unix or Linux or basically, you know, which operating system you are basically using. So in case of Windows, maybe you can use the task scheduler for that. You know, that will basically help you to run the task at a specific time that you have configured it accordingly. Or if it's Unix or Linux, definitely you can use cron tabs. Um, Unix guys, you might be definitely aware of this the cron tabs or the cron jobs that we call using that you can automate your jobs but in this example now that i'm just quickly going to show you how do we create a batch file and how do we use the task scheduler for automating the cli jobs say for example we want to automate the metadata export meaning we want to automate we want to have the metadata exported to a particular location on a regular basis Say every night at 10 p.m. you want the metadata to be exported to a particular location. So how do you do that? We just did the metadata export, right? Um, open the command line and you got to navigate to a particular folder. And in that folder, you can create a new folder and then log into force.com. Basically, you know, use force login and log into force.com. And then you got to export the data and then do a force logout. So all these set of commands you got to create a batch file with these set of commands. So once you run the batch file, automatically all these commands would run and the metadata would get exported. So what next? Then you got to use the task scheduler for running the batch file at specific intervals, say every day or every week or every month. Basically how you have designed. Okay, so how do we create a batch file? First of all, what is a batch file? A batch file is an executable file basically holding a set of commands. So how do you create a batch file? You just open a notepad and save it with a .bat extension and that becomes a batch file. As simple as that. So open a notepad and put in all your commands whatever. Let me not put in the commands right now. Let me save it with .bat extension. Say metadata export dot bat so it becomes a batch file okay so now that the batch file is successfully created we got to put in the commands into the batch file right what are the commands that we are going to put in so this is the batch file and these are the set of commands that we are going to put it so what it basically does cd and this particular folder structure so you want to basically have all your metadata exported to a particular location in your computer right so this is the location that i'm targeting and md whichever uh, folder that you want to get created so md basically creates a new folder so all these basic unique commands you got to be a little familiar so that you can very easily work in this interface so md and followed by the folder name so automatically a new folder will get created and then force login force login with your username password force export and just not force export i'm just giving the location where it should get exported and this syntax is to append the folder name with the current date once done do a force logout as simple as that so we are navigating to a folder creating a new subfolder logging to force.com and then doing a metadata export and then force logout so this is the set of commands that we are going to give it in the batch file. So once the batch file is run, this process automatically gets executed. First, let's do it manually and then let's see like how do we use a task scheduler to automate this process. Okay, now we got to include all these commands in the batch file. So open the batch file means edit the batch file and include all the commands. So how do we edit the batch file? Simply right click, edit and it will open up the notepad put in all these commands edit and put in all these commands save it so now the batch file is ready so once this batch file is done once we execute this automatically the process will happen okay so now that it is exporting the data yes the process is getting executed 
All right. So now the process has got completed. Let me navigate to the location and see if the metadata export is completed. So this is the location that I have mentioned in the batch file. So a new folder has got created. It has got created with the name metadata backup, but just not that with today's date as well. And once I open this, I have the full metadata export in place from applications, assignment rules, the labels, layouts, objects, and the whole metadata, the whole Salesforce metadata basically is exported in this particular location. So interesting, right? Yes. So what, what is that we have done? We have created a batch file with a set of commands, with a set of the commands that we can use in the command line interface. And that has automatically exported the metadata into this particular folder. Good. But this is a manual job, right? You got to, you know, explicitly run the batch file. So how do we automate this? So being a Windows machine, maybe definitely you can use a task scheduler for automating this process. But in case of Linux or Unix, and the concept is the same. But you got to use the shell scripts and you got to use the cron jobs for automating the process. Let's open task scheduler. Go for it. Create a new task. So action, create task. Maybe let me say metadata export. And then uh, the actions. Basically in action you got to give the batch file as the input. Browse for the batch file. And then you got to set a trigger. So what is a trigger? In a trigger basically you say like at what intervals this particular job has to be done. So basically you can give a date, time and you can, you know, uh, say the task to expire at whichever say, for example, it has to run for an year and uh, at, at what interval basically it has to repeat the task in one hour or like at whatever time you got to give. So once you do this, once you give, okay, this job basically gets executed. And what is it? The job will get executed at the interval as specified by you in the task scheduler. So at the time comes, the automatically the batch job will be picked up and it will be run and the metadata export will be saved in your machine. So interesting, right? Yes. So this is about Windows. And as I already told you for Unix or Linux, try with cron jobs. So by this way, you can automate process using the force.com CLI.